Welcome to Electra Online. Our next viewer request video deals with calculus and finding the volume that you obtain when you rotate an area that's defined by four lines or four curves um, around the, well, in this case, around the x-axis. On the next video, we're going to take the same area, revolve it around the y-axis, and then we're going to take a look and see how we can verify to some extent the answer by doing a rough order estimation of that volume. And so this is something very quickly that you can use on a test to see if you did the problem correctly or not, just in case something like this happens to be on the test. Well, you can kind of use that for almost any one of these types of problems. So we're going to try to calculate the volume that's obtained by taking this area right here that's defined by these two curves, y1 and y2, and those two uh, lines right here, x equals 1 and x equals 3. We revolve that around the x-axis, and yet kind of a curved kind of a vase-like shape that's hollow inside, doesn't have a base. How do we do that? Well, you need to find a way to define a small volume segment of that. And we can do that by slicing in this direction. So if we take a slice in this direction, let me use a different color so it doesn't get too confusing here. So let's do it like this. So take a little volume segment like this, a little cutout. What would you obtain if you slice it like that very, very thinly in such a way that the width of that is a small little dx? Well, when you do that, you get a washer. A washer that's used when you screw something down, you want to protect the material that you screw down with some hard metal that has a hole in it that's called a washer. And the washer will look like this. So let's draw it like this. Okay, we give it a little thickness like this. Oop, kind of. It's trying to make it a little bit better. There we go. Okay, and then we ha it's of course has a hole in it in the middle. No. Like that. Okay, so that's the segment you would get. If you take a head, take a knife, and you slice a slice like this, you can notice you have like a little washer. This thickness right here is the height right here, so that's the dx. We have an outer radius and we have an inner radius. The outer radius is defined by the distance from the center all the way to the very top function, which is y2. So it would be y2, and the inner radius would be from here, the x-axis, to the lower function, which is y1. So we have y2 and y1 as the outer and inner radius. Would it be a lot clearer if you took that 90 degrees rather than flat? No? Because you're all right so now we need to define the volume of this how do we define the volume well it's a small little volume element so we'll call it a small dv and the dv would be equal to the area times the thickness so the area can be obtained by taking the full area and subtracting the inner area from that so that would be pi y2 squared minus pi y1 squared. That would be the surface area so that of the whole disk minus the whole. And we multiply the times the thickness, which is dx, and that gives us the volume. Now, of course, since we have a dx here, and this is defined in terms of y, we need to convert from y to x. So y1 is 1 over x, and y2 is 2 over x. So dv can then be written as and also what we could do, let me erase this here, we can uh, factor out a pi, so that would be pi times y2 squared would be 2 over x quantity squared minus y1 squared would be 1 over x quantity squared times dx. And then when we square that, we get dv is equal to pi times 4 over x squared minus 1 over x squared times dx. So there's our volume element. Now to get the full volume, we want to integrate an infinite number of little disks right, like that from x equals 1 to x equals 3. That means so the volume is equal to the integral of the dv, which is equal to pi, because we can pull out a constant, times the integral from x equals 1 to x equals 3 of 4 over x squared minus 1 over x squared times dx. Okay, if we're going to integrate that, we want to bring the x squared up. So this can be written as v is equal to the integral of, well, let's uh, go ahead and just copy that down. Pi times from 1 to 3, 
the integral of 4x to the minus 2 minus 1x to the minus 2, and the whole thing times dx. And now we're ready to integrate, because when we integrate, we add one the exponent, divide by the new exponent, so volume equals pi times, here we get 4x to the minus 1 um, divided by minus 1, minus x to the minus 1 over minus 1, and that would be from 1 to 3. Now we have to evaluate that, so we can rewrite that as, let's see here, that would be pi times, that would be a 4 minus 4 over x, so let's write it like that, minus 4 over x, and the minus times the minus becomes a plus, plus 1 over x, evaluated from 1 to 3. So now we can go ahead and evaluate it by plugging the upper limit and then plugging the lower limit. So this is equal to pi times. When plugging the, op the upper limit, we get minus 4 over 3. That should be a 3. Let me do that again. There we go. That's a terrible looking 3 again. There we go. So um, plus 1 over 3. And then subtract from that when we plug in the lower limit. And so we have 4 over 1, that would be minus 4. And then here that would be plus 1 over 1, so it would be plus 1. Like this. And then if we then continue over here, because now we need to do a little bit more arithmetic. So we have the volume is equal to pi times, let's take the parentheses out, so we have minus 4 thirds plus 1 third. Um, and a minus, so this becomes a minus 3 times a minus, that would be plus 3, plus 3, and we can add these two fractions together, so it would be volume is equal to pi times minus 4 plus 1, that would be minus 3 over 3, plus 3, so it would be V is equal to pi times 1 minus 1 plus 3, or finally the volume is equal to 2 pi. It's an interesting result, 2 pi, based upon that question. But that at least is how we find the volume of an area that's defined by two curves and two lines. We revolve it around the x-axis, then we take a slice of that, and the trick is to take that slice, put it over here, realize that it's a washer, so this is the hole right here, that is that hole right in here. Here we have the inner radius and the outer radius, let me mark that, so this would be your inner radius, call that y1, and this would be your outer radius, like this, call that y2, and so that defines the dimensions of the washer, the thickness here dx is the thickness dx right here, and then if we define the volume correctly, in terms of y first, the functions y2 and y1, convert that into the, what the functions are equal to in terms of x, then we integrate, plug in the limits, and out comes the final volume. So that's how we do it when we have to revolve it around the x-axis. Now, what happens when we have to revolve it around the y-axis? Well, let's try it out on the next video. We'll use a slightly different technique. Instead of washers, we'll use a different kind of small delta volume or d volume. Let's take a look and see what that looks like. Well, if you spin it, it won't even look like a washer in the y-axis. Yes, it'll look something different. Yeah, yeah that's the idea.